All right, so so far in this series, we've created items that we can collect. They hop up in the air, populate our inventory, but they don't actually do anything at this point. So in this video, we're gonna make it so that these items integrate with our stats, our health, and all of our other systems so that we can click on them to use them. Let's get started. So first off, it's all gonna begin in our inventory slots as they're gonna be detecting the clicks and sending that message along. So let's head into that script. Now, the way we're gonna want this to work is that when we click on these slots, they send a message to the inventory manager to use the items and subtract the quantity. To do this, we could use buttons to detect, but that will create problems down the road as they aren't great for clicking and dragging and that sort of thing. So instead, we're gonna use this as a chance to explore Unity's interfaces. So up here beside our mono behavior, we're gonna add that we are now using the eye pointer click handler interface. And in order for this to work, we're just gonna have to right click and in our quick actions, make sure that we're using Unity's event systems. Next, we're also gonna have to right click and implement the interface. Here we can get rid of the garbage inside. And so whenever we click on one of these slots, first let's check to see if the quantity is greater than zero. And if there's actually an item in this slot, then we wanna look at our event data and essentially just check if the button is equal to the input button left. Later, we'll use right click to drop items, which is why we're differentiating here. Now, if we have left clicked on a slot and there actually is an item there, we wanna tell our inventory manager to use the item. It won't like this as we haven't created this method yet, but we'll just set it up. And here we just wanna pass along this, which is this script. That way the inventory manager will know which slot is in fact being clicked. Now, before we leave this script, let's just optimize a little. We're gonna make it so that we get the inventory manager on start. That way we don't have to fill any boxes in Unity. We'll just automate it. So on start, let's make sure that our script knows that the inventory manager is equal to get component in parent inventory manager. With that done, we can make this a private reference as it'll keep our inspector nice and clean. Now at the moment, our inventory manager is relatively boring with just the add item method for when we're adding items. We want to expand this by adding our use item method. So down below the public add item method, we're gonna add a public void use item and remember that it's having a inventory slot passed into it. Here we're just gonna do a quick check. We'll make sure that the slot actually has an item scriptable object. We'll also make sure that its quantity is greater than zero. And then for testing purposes, we're just gonna run a debug log where we'll just say that we're trying to use item and we'll print its name. And since we already programmed our slots to find the inventory manager themselves, there's no setup here. Now when we get in game, we can click on the items and we do get a debug printout. Now next up, we're ready to actually make these items do something. However, we don't wanna put that logic in our inventory manager as it would turn it into a monster script. So instead, let's just create a new script which we'll call use item. This item will be what triggers different effects from our items, but before we go there, we need to look at how we're actually changing our player stats. For example, my health and max health are handled with an on-screen UI, but I have a stats manager that handles my other stats. If you've been following along in this series, all of this happens in the stats manager. If not, you'll need to locate wherever you handle the stats for your game. Now our stats manager has a list of all of our different stats, as well as a method for updating our max health, which updates the health and then also changes the on-screen text. I'm gonna copy this and make another one. This will be for updating our current health. Then I'll just copy this method one more time to show how stats like speed, which are not handled in an on-screen UI, but instead through our stats menu can be updated. Sorry for that rough cut. I just took out the health text line there as we're gonna be updating the text differently for stats like speed. Now to see how we're gonna do that, let's go to our stats UI script. This one just holds all the user interface for our stats menu. And you'll notice that previously in the series, we set up an update damage and update speed methods, which just update the text for those specific stats. Additionally, I have an update all stats method, which will update the text for all stats in the stats menu at the same time. Now we wanna harness those methods in our stats manager. So at the top, let's just make a reference to our stats UI script, then scroll down here and just call those methods in order to update our text in the menu. We'll now just make a quick update in Unity to reflect those changes going to our stats manager and making sure that it has a reference to the stats UI script, which is on the stats panel. Now that we've set up a system so that stat changes are actually affected in our UI, we can head back to the stats manager script where at long last, we're gonna get to that use item script we created a hundred years ago. First, let's make a reference to it here at the top. Now all we're gonna do here is make it so that if we have an item and its quantity is greater than zero, we're gonna tell the use item script that it should apply the item effects, and then we'll send over the item scriptable object that we are using. 
Before we actually get into using the item though, we want to make sure that we take the item we just used out of our inventory. So we'll tell the slot that its quantity should go down by one. And if its quantity happens to be below or equal to zero at this point, we just want to make sure to reset the slot. So we'll tell the slot that its item SO is now null. And finally, we'll just update the UI for the slot so that whether it's empty or not, it now has the right number and icon. Let's head over to use item now and get rid of the start and update methods. Now all the logic we're going to put here in use item could technically go in the inventory manager, but that would really make it bloat, which is why we've created this helper script. So here we're just going to create the public void method, apply item effects, and make sure that it's ready to accept in an item scriptable object. We'll start by setting up the ability to change our health. So here we're just going to quickly make it so that if the item scriptable object has a value for current health that's greater than zero, it'll tell our stats manager that it should update health, and it'll pass along that amount. Because we're going to have quite a few of these little if statements, I'm actually going to remove the brackets here. I'm then just going to make a line here for our max health, which is essentially the exact same thing, except that it's passing along the max health value. The beauty of this is that you can have one item actually have effects on multiple stats, and it will check them all. That's why we're not using else if statements here. Now, while we're at it, let's just make one for our speed, so that if there's a speed value put in, we can also update our speed. Now you can do that for any of the stats you've got in your scriptable object if you want, but the other thing we want to do while we're here is set up temporary items. So you'll notice we had that duration box in our item scriptable object, and so if our item actually has a duration set, we want to make sure that its effects only last for a set period of time. To do this, we're going to start a coroutine, we'll call it effect timer, and we'll just pass along the item as well as its duration. So for the coroutine, we'll make a I enumerator called effect timer, and again, just make sure that it's accepting a scriptable object as well as a float. All we'll do here is make it yield for a set amount of time, in this case, the duration. And once that's done, we'll copy paste all our items from up above and just make it so that it subtracts them. So if it had currently added a bunch of health, it will now take away that same amount of health. Now back in Unity, I want to test this. So I've just opened up my stats menu, but you'll notice that when I'm in game view, my inventory is overlapping, it's sort of funny. I actually want stats to take precedence, so I'm just going to click on my inventory canvas, and on the canvas itself, just set its sorting order to negative one, so that it goes down below the other canvases. I'll then make my stats canvas transparent once more, so that we're ready to test this. Now I'll just go to my inventory canvas, make sure to add the use item script, and then just make sure that I drag it into the inventory manager so that it knows where to find it. Now we're getting close at this point, but if I were to test now, you'll notice that when I go to use one of these items, nothing happens. That just has to do with the fact that I have so many overlapping canvases, and some of them have been set to block raycasts, and so they're not allowing my click to go through to the inventory. You can see here that if I went into my stats manager and just unclicked the raycast target on my stats canvas, I'd then be able to use the items just fine. This is a pretty easy fix. I can just go into my stats UI, which is where I'm currently toggling my canvases open and closed. And all I want to do is at the same time that I'm changing their alpha, I also want to change their status in terms of blocking raycasts. So when we set their alpha to zero, we'll make sure that they are no longer blocking raycasts. And then we'll just use the same line, but set it true when we're opening the inventory. We're one step closer, but this is complex. Right now, if you look at my stats, you'll see that I'm at five for speed. I can use the pumpkin and my speed goes up. If I wait a couple of seconds for that duration to finish, my speed drops back down. That's working great. However, you'll notice that if I collect another item and click here on my pumpkin, it actually uses the stake. Now if you're experiencing something similar, the reason's probably because while we have a small icon, it's actually a very large sprite with a lot of empty space. So while you're trying to click item number one, there's a good chance you're actually clicking on the empty space from sprite number two. This is annoying, but fortunately it's relatively easy to fix. So what we'll want to do here is just find the offending graphic, change its sprite to multiple, apply it, don't worry about that white space, and then go into our sprite editor. Here we can just actually click and drag to draw a new outline for it. You'll notice I've already made mine a little smaller here, but it started off quite large. The trick here is just to make sure that it's actually square so it matches our icon shape and that we eliminate the empty space around it. Now at first it's just going to be a big mess and that's because we've broken the link to our stake item. So I'm just going to go into my stake scriptable object here and make sure that it can refind the item. I'm also going to click on my inventory slot which right now I just put this there as a sort of default. It's not actually important when the game runs but I want to make sure that it has that link so that I can see how things are looking. You can see now that that's looking a lot better, and if I apply this override to all of my inventory slots, they'll all go back to looking normal. 
So we're almost there now. However, we still have the ability to overheal our character. There's no check to make sure that we don't heal him for more health than he has. So let's go into our inventory slot. And whenever we click on an item, before we call it use the item, let's just check to see if it's a health item. So if our current health, when we click the item, is greater than our max health, or even equal to it, we're just gonna return, meaning we don't actually want to pass along the healing if we're already full. Now, of course, we only actually wanna do this if it's a healing item. If it's not, then we can skip this altogether. So let's just make sure that the if the item scriptable object is actually trying to heal our current health, so it has a value greater than zero. So if that's true and we don't need to be healed, we're just gonna return and skip this line. Otherwise, we'll pass along and use the item as normal. One last little problem could remain, and that is just what if we only need one health to be full, but the item heals five, it will still overheal us. So in our update health method, we just wanna make sure that if we don't need all the healing, so if our current health becomes greater than max health, that we just set our current health to be equal to max health. Now we'll use what little bit of healing we need and not overheal the player. And with those 75 changes, we can now collect items just fine. You'll notice a couple of mine are a little small. That's just because I haven't updated all of my sprites to the right size. That said, I can now click on the pumpkin. You'll notice my speed goes up. After two seconds, if I look at my stats again, my speed has gone back down. Now when I click on the stake, if my health is full, it won't work. However, if I take some damage first and click on it, there we go, it's healing but not overhealing. All right, hope you found that one helpful. We've still got a lot of work to do and in the next video, we'll make it so that we can stack items and also so that we can drop items we don't want. Hope to see you in that next video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.